Hey folks, today we are building these. These are wireless RGB LED backlit audio panels that you can control with your phone. So here is everything you're going to need for the project. So the first thing you're going to need are the panels themselves. Uh, these are 12 by 12 panels. That's kind of the common size. These are two inches thick. Uh, you'll see more of the one inches than the two inches, but pretty much any size panel will work. Even if you don't end up with 12 by 12, or if you don't end up doing the three by two size that I'm, I'm going to build here, adjusting the measurements should be pretty easy. So whatever panels you have, you'll be able to follow this tutorial. Next are the wood framing boards. What I'm using are drops from shaving off the sides of two by fours. Uh, if you don't have anything like that laying around, you can get uh, trim boards from your big box store or you can get uh, you know balsa wood in about the same dimensions. So I will be using these 3D printed brackets to hold the frame boards together. Uh, this thing doesn't need to support a lot of weight. These panels are very light, the electronics don't weigh much. Uh, so 3D printing is fine, they're going to be held together with hot glue. Uh, so you know, nothing, nothing, no major heavy construction here, just some, some glued plastic pieces on some wood. I'll leave the STLs to these below. The uh, corner brackets come with a two and a half centimeter standoff, so that when this thing is hanging on your wall, it's not you know, pushing the lights directly against the wall itself, and then they have some, some room to disperse and reflect. Here are the LEDs that I'll be using. Uh, this is a strip of WS2812Bs, commonly called NeoPixels. That's the kind of the Arduino specific brand of them. Uh, these are medium density. You can get them with more or fewer pixels per inch. I think these are 60 pixels per meter. Uh, and they have to be five volt. If you get the 12 volts, the circuitry is gonna have to change. Those LEDs will be controlled by a Wemos D1. Uh, it's a very small microcontroller and it comes with built-in Wi-Fi, so it's a great economical solution for projects like this. Uh, that will be powered by a 18650 battery uh, and we will implement a battery and charging controller. So the idea here is that if you just connect the battery directly to the Wemos, it'll run the battery down um, past its, its usable limit and damage the battery. This little guy will regulate that power and once the battery drops too low a voltage, it'll cut off power. And then you can also charge the battery and power the Wemos using the USB plug on the, uh, the controller. So we'll be able to use this thing with the battery or connected directly to USB. These are all custom 3D printed cases. Uh, all the STLs will be linked below. Uh, they have little lids for them as well. So since we're working with electronics, you will need hookup wire. Uh, this is just regular old 23 gauge uh, silicone coated wire, nothing special about that. If you will be using my battery holder, you will also need some tabbing wire or battery tabs. Uh, this wraps around the ends of the battery holder to make connections with the, the battery terminals. What I have here is, I think this is five millimeter tabbing wire. Anything from four to six millimeters will work just fine. They also sell individual uh, battery tabs. Uh, so I'll link to a couple of options for, for this, this tabbing part below. Of course, you can use a standard, you know, fully assembled 18650 battery holder with its own leads. That'll, that's no problem as well. But uh, if you want to use this battery holder, I'll give you some options for the tabbing wire. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay out all the panels. Uh, and uh, like I said, I'm doing three by two. So now with all the panels laid out, I'm going to add the framing pieces. So notice that I left about a three quarter inch gap between the edge of the panel and the frame. Them, I'm going to mark off the cuts that I'll need to make to each piece. Now I'm going to take these all down and cut them on the bandsaw. The framing pieces cut to size and placed back onto the acoustic panels. We can now place our, our brackets. Uh, and note that all these brackets are pushed in as far as possible, into the center as, as much as they can, leaving room on the outside of the frame to glue down the LED strips. Um, so I'm going to glue each of these brackets down with the trusty hot glue.
All right, now the frame is glued together. Uh, next, we are going to attach the LED strips. So we're gonna measure and cut each LED strip. Now, a mistake I've made before um, is that you have to keep in mind that uh, all of these WS2812 strips have a direction. Uh, so the signal flows one way that's indicated by a small little arrow. Uh, in this case, it's pointing that direction on the, the digital signal input. So you have to make sure that those arrows are all pointing clockwise around the, uh, the frame. So with the LEDs mounted, the next thing I'm going to do is mount the electronics. The first thing we're going to look at is the battery. If you're using my battery holder, uh, you need to insert that tabbing wire and bend it around each side, uh, each end of the, the holder, and that will give something for the battery to connect to. It's inserted. If I plug in a USB cable, I'd rather not be directly over one of these LEDs, so I'm going to probably put it like right there. And now same with the Wemos. Uh, I don't want the USB to directly cover an LED, so right about there would probably be good. So that's where these things will be mounted. To hang the panel, I designed and printed these standoffs so that are the same height as the corner standoffs. They also have a small groove in them to keep the line in the right spot. Next, we'll, uh, we'll have to do some soldering. The first thing we need to look at are the LED strips. You obviously need to solder hookup wires at the end and beginning of each strip so that all four strips are connected. However, that makes a complete closed loop. Now that's what we want for power. If we cut these strips and powered only one end, Given the variable and relatively low voltage supplied by the battery, there's a chance we could see some fade near the end of the string, which happens to be right next to the beginning, making that fade very obvious. If we keep it as a loop, then the max LED distance from the power source is halved. The digital signal doesn't work that way though, so we'll need to cut a digital lead near the Wemos. I simply used a hoppy knife to slice out one half of the signal solder pad. However, you may find it easier to completely cut the LED strip and then re-solder the voltage and ground pads. Now let's bring in the mounted electronics. The first thing we're going to solder are the battery leads to the charge controller. The positive battery lead hooks to the B plus pad and the negative to the B minus pad. I would strongly suggest removing the battery tabs from the battery holder before soldering. Otherwise, you're likely to melt the battery holder. Next, we'll solder the controller output to the LED strip. The plus pad on the controller should connect to the plus 5 volt pad on the LED strip and the minus pad on the controller to the minus pad on the strip. You'll need to connect the plus pad on the controller to the 5 volt pin and the minus pad to the ground pin on the Wemos. I used a self-soldering connector to join all three wires, however you can simply solder two wires to each pad if you wish. I chose to use a pin header, however there's no reason you can't solder directly to the pad if you never intend on using this processor for anything else. Finally, you need to connect pin D3 of the Wemos to the D1 pad on the LED strip, the one that was disconnected from the other end of the LED strip. With all of the wires hanging loose from the back of this panel, it may be a good idea to schmoo them down with some hot glue. With this setup, you can plug a USB cable into the battery controller, and that will power the strip, the Wemos, and it will also charge the 18650 battery. You can unplug everything, and the panel will be powered solely by the battery and you can plug into the Wemos for programming. That will also power the panel, however, it won't charge the battery. Now with everything connected, we just have to program the Wemos. I've linked the source file below. Before you upload this to your Wemos, you have to make a couple of changes. You must first set your Wi-Fi name and password. 
then you must set the correct LED count as well. When you first power on the LEDs, it will default to an RGB fade animation. The Wemos will connect to your local Wi-Fi network and host a tiny web server that will serve up a settings page and let you change the LED effect, colors, and speed. You can get the IP address of the Wemos from either the serial output or from your Wi-Fi router. Then just enter that IP in your web browser. So this is the basic three color fade animation. Uh, by default it fades between red, green, and blue. Uh, you can change those colors and it's the only pattern that uses all three of the uh, colors here. So let's just mix this up a bit. And then if you want to uh, fade in and out, um, just put zeros in there. Or if you want it to kind of more like a heartbeat, uh, we can go. So that's the fade, and again, it, it fades between all three colors. Next are raindrops. Uh, this is going to light all of the LEDs using the primary color, and then randomly splash secondary color around the rim. So let's do a dark green background and a bright red splash. And sometimes that looks cooler if you wanted to kind of go with some colors that were a, bit, a little bit more complementary. So this is kind of the aqua and pink that's popular with streamers nowadays. And then finally, you can leave it as a solid color. Uh, additionally, you can leave it as a solid color, uh, and this will only use the primary color. So this will just light up as the one color and not change. Uh, there's a full rainbow effect, and this will just spin the rainbow around the, the, the panel. And then lastly, there is an off setting, uh, which only turns the LEDs off. The, the Wemos is still powered. Uh, it's still, you know, the, the page is still here, um, but uh, none of the LEDs are showing anything. So those are the built-in effects. Uh, it's easy enough uh, if you're if you're familiar with programming Arduino's. Uh, the source code is pretty well laid out. I think uh, it should be pretty easy to, to come up with new color palettes or patterns or, or effects uh, if you kind of know what you're doing a little bit. So that is how I made some pretty baller RGB LED acoustic panels. Not only will they help cut down echo, but they'll also look fantastic on any Twitch stream or YouTube video. I'll leave links to all the materials and resources below as well as some lessons learned. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe to Little Mikey's Big Plans.